Because Microsoft Excel is required on a lot of jobs today, employers would like to test candidates before hiring them. There are three main tests that exist today to test your knowledge of Excel user interface, formulas, functions, and analytics, and they could be categorized in basic, intermediate, and advanced. In this video, we're going to focus on advanced Excel job test, and I'll share with you questions, answers, and solutions typically asked on the test. Hi there, this is Vadim Mikhalenka, and in this video, I'll share with you how to pass an employment assessment test. Typically, the type of Excel test you're going to get as part of the hiring process is dependent upon the position you're applying for. Most of the time, advanced Excel job test is presented if you're applying for business consultant position, financial analyst, client solution analyst, marketing or project manager, senior or principal analyst, and a lot of other senior and principal level jobs. In this video, I will share with you sample questions we see on the tests. I will have some questions for you to try, and I'll show you tips, tricks, and hacks on how to get ready and pass the test. I will also share with you some additional test resources that might benefit you and might help you to get ready for the test quickly. Here is the sample question you might get as part of the test. Which function would be used to add various payment amounts in a worksheet with three different criteria? And you might be presented with four different choices. Count if as, some if as, some if, or none of the above. Do you think you know the answer? Let me tell you a little bit about myself. My name is Vadim Mikhalenka, and I have MBA and master's degree in computer science. I have been helping people for more than 25 years to get hired and find jobs. I have founded howtoanalyzedata.net website with only intent to help people get employment. This site helped a lot of people, and I'm pretty sure it will help you as well. And now, let's jump straight to the questions, answers, and solutions. Very frequently, your knowledge of Excel formulas and functions is tested by questions like this. Which statement of nested if functions is correct? And you are presented with four different choices. Three of these choices presented contain syntax errors, and one choice is correct. Do you think you know the answer? The best way to answer the question around Excel formulas and functions is to understand the syntax of formulas and functions in question. For example, if you type if in Excel, you see that there are multiple arguments that are part of this function. You can also ask for help by typing F1 on the keyboard, and that brings up Excel article around the particular formula or function. Here you can see some of the examples, as well as the full syntax. Now let's look at some tricks the test creators use to hope that you will answer these types of questions incorrectly. Let's look at choice B. Instead of if function, it's if s, which is a completely different function in Microsoft Excel. So obviously choice B is incorrect. Let's look at choice C. And as you can see, they hid an extra equal sign in the nested if, which is not a valid syntax. And in very similar way, they hid a colon sign in choice D. So the correct choice here is choice A. And the lesson learned for you is to answer these types of questions. You need to understand the syntax and look for syntax errors in all choices presented to you. Hopefully you've got this one right. I would like to give you a tip. There are a lot of different providers that conduct employment assessment tests. Most common providers that do assessment tests today are Indeed.com, IKM, SkillCheck, eSkills, Connexa, SHL, and a lot of others. Employer typically requests provider to administer assessment tests, and then provider contacts the candidates to conduct the test. A lot of times, provider has a sample test questions on their website. Once you know which provider will be assessing your skills, it's a good idea to visit their website to find sample questions. A lot of times during assessment test, you might see questions asking you which argument is not part of the particular function. Well, we're looking at one of those questions. Which of the following is not an argument you would find in some if function? And you're presented with four different choices, some range, criteria, value if true, or range. Do you think you know the answer? There are multiple ways you can get to the answer unless you don't know it. I'll show you two most efficient ones, at least from my standpoint. So if you type the formula 
following the equal sign, it shows you some arguments that are used uh, by this particular formula as soon as you open the parentheses. So sum if formula uses range, criteria, and then sum range arguments as part of the formula. Another way to get to the answer might be for you to put the cursor on top of the function and press F1 button in the Windows keyboard. It brings up Excel's help. And because we put the cursor right on top of the function or inside the function, it brings in context sensitive help. Here in this help article, you can find the syntax for some if formula and read some additional information about it. Because the question is asking which of the following is not an argument, you must have figured answer by now. And the correct answer is C, value if true, which is not part of the syntax of some if formula, which only contains range, criteria, and some range arguments. Hopefully you've got this one right. Let me share with you some information that you probably don't know. Based on our recent research, most assessment test providers deduct points for incorrect answers. So it is not a good idea to guess answers during the test. You can ask the provider to see how they handle incorrect answers. If they deduct points for incorrect answers, you might consider skipping the questions where you do not know the answers to. Now let's continue and get you ready for the assessment test. Now let's look at the tricky question you frequently see as part of the Excel assessment test. Which Excel test is without VLOOKUP, right? Which formula can be inserted into cell G5 and copied to all the cells of column G in order to calculate the overall price of the items? We have four choices here. Two of the choices use VLOOKUP. Three of the choices use VLOOKUP. One use double VLOOKUP. And the third choice, C, uses find function. We also have a data here presented, uh, a snapshot from Microsoft Excel, so you can visually see the references made in, in the question itself. Which one do you think is the right answer here? To better understand the answer, let's jump to Excel and understand the data first. We have multiple columns of the data, and what's most likely presented here are sales of the items. We have item ID in the column A, then we have item description, and then we have item price. Then we have item, which is different from the item in the same row, if you look. Uh, so column A, for example, A2 is different from E2. Then we have quantity. Ultimately, this is probably a master for the items, how much each item costs. In second table, starting from column E until column G, represents the actual sales. What we're trying to do in this question, what question is asking us, can we find the item that was sold, multiply quantity of the item, to the found item to calculate overall price. What's tricky about this question though, and specifically for this one, it's asking you to calculate the value in the cell G5. And by default, the first cell is G2, which is cursors pointing to, but G5 is right here. And all the calculations offered here are for the cell G5. So you have to pay attention and reread the questions. Sometimes they try to trick you and do calculations not in the first cell that's available, but somewhere in the middle of the range of cells that highlighted in yellow. Jumping back to our Excel document, let's calculate the value for the cell G2 first. So for the cell G2, we need to take the value of F2, which is the quantity, and then we need to look up the item from the cell E2 in the range of A through C. So items price for the item 215478, 215478 is $658 and we multiply it by 265. So the correct value of overall price, and you can do the calculations, is 174,370.00. Now if we expand this formula, it will fill up all the values in the column G, and we're interested in the formula in the cell G5. And formula in the cell G5 would be value of F5 and then E5 uh, accordingly to calculate the correct set of values. And this is how this formula looks right in the cell. Now let's recap. The correct answer here is B, which is uh, F5 multiplied by VLOOKUP of E5 and then the range, and then you're looking up the uh, ID of the item is 3, the index of the item is 3. Answer A is incorrect in this case because uh, the last parameter must be false to yield an accurate result. 
answer C is incorrect because find is not the right function here to use. And answer D is incorrect since it doesn't set the fixed lookup range using the dollar signs. So hopefully you've got this one right. It was a tricky question, but you see a lot of this as part of intermediate and advanced Excel assessment tests. Can I ask you to do me a favor? If you know someone who will benefit from this material and looking for the job, please share this content with them. I really appreciate it. This will help them find the jobs quickly. Thank you very much. Now let's continue and get you ready for the assessment test. Let's look at the tricky Excel assessment test question, which we frequently see as part of the tests. Company A is looking at four possible activities and will accept them if the IRR is 10% or above, as appeared in the cell E2. What is the formula utilized in cell C2, which can also be copied down to cells C through C5 to produce the required results? There are four choices here, all use E formula, and there is a table here which represents the activities. What do you think is the right answer? Let's see if we can nail this question together. Let's jump to Excel and take a look at the data that is presented here. First of all, what is IRR? IRR is the internal rate of return. So you have some activity and you calculate return on investment for that particular activity. It is internal return on investment. So it's calculated a little bit differently, but the idea is the same. We do not need to calculate IRR here, but it's good to understand because this is a confusing, this data might be confusing if you do not understand what IRR means. Now let's look at the data. I calculated accept status here, and this is how the formula looks like. We have to use absolute reference here for the cell E2, because as we move and start to project the data and expand it, if we need to uh, reflect this formula for all of the activities, then the value of E2, if we don't use absolute value, will also start shifting. So let me demonstrate. For example, right now, because we use absolute reference, if I am going to expand this formula, it will be correct. It will calculate it correctly. But if, for example, this formula wouldn't be absolute value, it would be just a relative value, and we accept it, it will still calculate it correctly for the cell C2, but as soon as I start expanding it, it will just calculate it incorrectly because it will take the value from this cells and here the value is zero so it's always look looks acceptable because zero will always be less than any one of these values in the b3 b4 b5 so let's recap the correct answer here is a because in this case of the a it uses absolute references case b is incorrect because it uses relative references and answer d is incorrect because there is an error in the syntax of the formula here. So hopefully you've got this one right. It's a tricky question. Some of the answers do lead to the correct results for one cell, but because question itself is asking what is the formula utilized in cell C2, which can also be copied down to cell C3 through C5, that's the part that confuses you, and that leads to only one correct answer here on the list. And now it's your turn. Please make sure to post your answer in the comment section below this video so I can give you the grade. Here's the question for you to answer. Which of the following is the correct formula to calculate the weighted average score in cell C8 as shown below? And there are four choices here. Choice A, use average formula. Choice B, use some product formula with the arguments presented on the screen. Choice C is also use some product formula but with the different set of arguments and choice D, use average formula. Which one do you think is the correct choice here? Please make sure to post your answer in the comment section of this video so I can give you the grade. Let's talk about best practices on how to get ready for employment assessment test. If this option is available and you have a choice, try to schedule assessment test in the morning when you have highest levels of energy. Get a good night's sleep before the test. And please do not take the test if you're tired since a lot of questions require your top mental energy performance. During the test, read each question carefully, ideally more than once. Questions are designed to be tricky, and each and every detail in the question might be important. If you have a choice, try to answer easy questions first. This would allow you to leave harder questions for the end, but you will get easy answers in and you will get the points for them. Try to validate your answers with more than one method. For example, if you're doing an Excel assessment test, 
You can do manual calculation. You can try to use formulas for calculations, use calculator, or use pivot tables to validate your answers. And last but not least, try not to guess the answers, as some providers deduct points for incorrect selections. Let's look at the question, which tests your knowledge of Microsoft Excel charts and graphs. The graph 1 was created from the range A1 through C4. What are the steps you need to take to convert it to graph 2? You are presented with two screenshots, one of the data in the graph for graph 1, and second one, same data, but with the graph 2. There are four choices. Hit select data and then switch row and column. Choice B, right click the leftmost columns in their title and hit delete. Choice C, change the range of the graph to A2 through C4. And then choice D, change the number format of range A1 through A4 and range B1 through C1 to text and reinsert the chart. Which one do you think is right? To better understand the answer to this question, let's jump right to Microsoft Excel and take a look at the data. The reason there are four sets of bars here in this chart, even though we only have two sets of data, is because everything is formatted as the number. You see here product titles. You see the header of column B and column C are formatted as the number. And Excel, when inserting the chart, did not correctly detect the values and even though we wanted to present products and then B1 and B2 cell values as headers in the chart, they were detected by Microsoft Excel as actual values that should be calculated inside the chart. Because headers were included in the calculation, you see this product section, which has one value as 1, which matches B1 cell, and then you have second value as 2, which matches C1 cell. So how would you convert this chart into the other chart that was presented as part of Excel test question? The correct choice here is choice D. We need to change the number format of the range A1 through A4 and range B1 through C1 to text and reinsert the chart. Let's go ahead and do it. I created a duplicate of this data that we see in the original question right in the columns E through G and you see it also has all the values and numbers. So first step is we need to convert this range into text. To do that, we need to select the range and then we need to select the text. So the first point was accomplished. Second point is a little trickier. In order for us to represent the number as text, we would need to start this number with apostrophe. And once we click enter, you see this green triangle in the upper left corner, which indicates that this number is actually a text. We'll do the same thing for the second number in the cell G1. Now, as we're done with the conversion, we can reinsert the chart. And you see, once we reinserted the chart, it correctly represents the values. It only has values for product one, two, and three, and no longer has values for the header of the data. To recap, the correct choice is D. You need to change the number format of the ranges A1 through C3 and ranges B1 through C1 to text and reinsert the chart. Answer A is insufficient, as the legend will still say series 1 and series 2 instead of 1 and 2. Answer C will lead you to an error and cannot be done. And answer D is incorrect and will yield a completely different chart. So hopefully you've got this one right. And if you didn't, don't get frustrated. But these are the types of questions that you frequently see on Excel Intermediate and Advanced Excel tests. People contact me and ask what's changed during COVID-19. Let's look at the changes in employment assessment test process that have happened recently. One of the biggest changes is the fact that a lot of people work remotely, which means a lot of hiring also happening remotely. Provider might ask you to install special software to monitor your desktop activities. They might also ask you to enable your camera to see what you're doing during the test. Another big shift we see is that the questions become more relevant to the position. For example, if you're applying for accountant or bookkeeper job, make sure you know how to import the data, do profit and loss reports, calculate the expenses, and calculate the annual statements. These are the types of questions that you might see for that specific position. Researching the company and researching the test provider always works for our students. 
Once you know who the provider is, you can try to go to their website to see the sample questions to get an idea what kind of questions you're going to get on the test. It is always a good idea to refresh your hands-on skills and practice before the test. This gives you necessary boost of confidence and allows to pass the test with the higher grade. If you didn't pass the test, make sure to reflect after it. Take notes and develop an action plan to see what the next steps might be to get you the job. Very frequently, you might be asked formula-related question as part of your Excel assessment test. For example, the question that we see on the screen asks which function should be entered into a cell B10 to calculate all products marked with yes in the expired column and refrigerator in the stored column. And then you are presented with the snippet. Data snippet that we see on the screen contains three columns. In the first column A, we see the list of products. In the second column B, we see variety of values. Some of them have yes and no. Some of them show expired. And in the third column, different types of the products. And some of the types are stored, refrigerator, and pantry. There are four choices with the samples of the formulas that could be used to answer this question. There are two samples with count if s formula. One choice contains some if s formula. And another choice contains if s formula. So which one do you think is correct answer here? Let's work together to get to the solution. If you look inside Microsoft Excel, I put the table that we saw in the snippet right in the Excel spreadsheet. I also put the possible values that were presented as part of the question in the right side of the screen. I used a little trick here and started the formula with apostrophe. This way Excel doesn't think that this is a formula and doesn't start calculations. Now it is always a good idea to reread the question just to make sure you understand what is being asked. And when you reread the question, you might notice that you are being asked to calculate all products. But what does it mean, all products? Does it mean count of all products? Does it mean sum of all products? Or does it mean that they are asking you to return just the range of products with all the data associated with the product? As you might have learned, the test providers are not trying to help you. And most of the time, specialize in making questions tricky. Now, logically speaking, you cannot return sum of products. If you look at the choices presented here, you can reasonably assume that you are asking to calculate count of products that meet certain criteria. And there are two criteria that are presented, yes in the expired column and refrigerator in the stored column. And it might be coming clear to you that there are two data tables built in one, the today's date and then the date as well as Cheeker John with the employee ID number is a one table. Another set of data or range, as you can call it in Excel, would be down below. And this range will have three columns, which you can highlight in the different color temporarily, just to make sure that you can understand the difference. So once we decode the question, it becomes clear that they're asking us to return the count of products from this column that meet criteria in expired column and then stored column. Based on this information, we can reasonably exclude choices B and C because some ifs functions as well as ifs functions do not return counts. And the only choices that will work based on our understanding of question would be choices A and D. So which one is right among A and D? Typically, when you have two choices presented with very similar set of values, it is difference in the syntax of the formula between choice A and choice D. And if we look at the syntax of COUNTIFS formula, you will see that COUNTIFS formula supports multiple criteria and ranges versus COUNTIF formula, which only supports one range and one criteria. So the correct answer here is choice A, because choices B and C not just logically cannot calculate the value, but also have incorrect Excel formula syntax. And for the same reason, choice D is incorrect as well because it has incorrect Excel formula syntax. And when you put the correct formula into the cell B10, you will see that the final number of products that meet criteria is two. This was a tough question. Hopefully you've got this one right. And now it's your turn. Please make sure to post your answer in the comment section below this video so I can give you the grade. Here is the question for you to answer. 
you need to display last day of the month based on the month's ID in the year, which formula should be entered in the cell G2 to accomplish this objective. And you have four choices, EO months and the range B2 through F2, and then G1, E month, and then dollar sign B dollar sign 2, comma G1, choice C, E months, and then dollar sign B, dollar sign 2, comma B2 plus G1, and then choice D, month, and then parentheses, dollar sign G, dollar sign 2, plus G1. Which one do you think is the right answer? Make sure to post your answer in the comment section of this video so I can give you the grade. One of the most frequent questions we see on the test is the question where you need to find the true statement among variety of wrong statements. We are looking at exactly this type of question. Which one of the following statements is true? And you have four different choices. Some if is used to count cells based on specified ranges and criteria. If statement has to be used first in a worksheet before you can use some ifs or count ifs functions. Count ifs is used to count the number of cells specified by a given set of conditions or criteria. And last but not least, none of the options listed above are correct. Which one do you think is right? One of the tricks about answering these types of questions, if you find at least one question which is false, it means that choice D is also incorrect. And in our case, there are two choices that are incorrect. Let's look at each one of those incorrect choices in more details. One of the tricks to answer these types of questions is to understand the definition of the function inside Microsoft Excel. For example, if at any point of time I type F1 on Windows keyboard, it will bring up Excel's help. And here you can find definition of, for example, some if function. Obviously, you can also Google it and find the definitions even faster. But what we learn here when we click on the sum if function, if you haven't known this already, is that this function finds the sum of values. And choice A tells you that sum if s function counts cells based on specific range and criteria, which is incorrect because sum if s functions sums the values based on the specified ranges and criteria. Choice B is also incorrect because there is no such limitation that if statement has to be used first in the worksheets before you can use some ifs or count ifs functions, which automatically makes choice D incorrect as well. So the only true statement here is choice C. Count ifs is used to count the number of cells specified by a given set of conditions or criteria. This was a tricky question, but you see a lot of these types of questions on the test. Hopefully you've got this one right. Thanks for watching. I encourage you to check out our daily question challenge in the community section of this channel. I also recommend that you check downloads in the description section of this video. Please also check out resources page on our website, howtoanalyzedata.net slash resources. If you like the content, please give this video a big thumbs up. This tells us that you need more content like this. I would encourage you to share this video with other people that might be looking for the job. This will help them to get prepared and pass assessment test faster. Please consider subscribing and following this channel. We have community of great people helping each other to get ready and pass the test. Please leave questions, comments, or suggestions in the comment section of this video. And all the best on your interview and assessment test. Thanks for watching.